Russian Marines, together with the North Korean military, launched an offensive in the Kursk region, but they suffered losses, according to Forbes. Russian Marines, apparently backed by North Korean reinforcements, threw themselves at Ukrainian positions in Kursk Oblast in Western Russia. The agency writes, according to the article, Russia's 810th Marine Brigade with North Korean reinforcements that arrived at the front last month was not the only Russian unit to counterattack the Kursk salient, but it may have been the most unsuccessful. As Forbes explains, one of Trump's proposals is for Ukraine and Russia to agree to a ceasefire along the current front line, which includes not only southern and eastern Ukraine, but also Russia's Kursk region. If Trump's plan actually works, and it's a big if, Russia would effectively give up 270 square miles of Russian land in exchange for about 20% of Ukraine. That's 45,000 square miles it would occupy. Forbes writes, noting that Russian dictator Putin would clearly not be happy with this seemingly favorable exchange. As Forbes notes, the Russian 810th Marine Brigade, with North Korean soldiers attached to it, suffered a crushing failure in its attempt to attack the left flank of the Kursk salient. According to the Ukrainian Marine Aerial Reconnaissance Officer Kriegsforscher, cited by Forbes, the 810th Marine Brigade recently received a shipment of 40 BTR H2 wheeled armored personnel carriers to compensate for some of the losses it suffered during its attempts and failures to drive the Ukrainian army out of the Kursk region. Thus, at least 14 BTRs fired at the left flank of the Kursk salient. Ten of them are destroyed or damaged and abandoned, Kriegsforscher says. Analyzing the Russian losses during the offensive, the agency writes that up to 10 soldiers can squeeze into 17-ton vehicles, meaning that the 810th Naval Infantry Brigade could have lost 140 troops in total, although it's likely at least a few escaped their burning BTRs. In turn, Kriegsforscher did not rule out further Russian offensives in the Kursk region. As I said before, the left flank and the center will be the hardest places in Kursk Oblast. Kriegsforscher says, the Ukrainian military has been holding a foothold in the Kursk region for several months. In late summer, it was reported that the Ukrainian armed forces controlled 100 settlements and captured nearly 600 Russian soldiers. At the end of October, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported that since the beginning of the Kursk operation, Russia had lost 17,819 soldiers, both wounded and killed. Another 700 Russians were taken prisoner. Recently, the command of the Airborne Assault Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported that since the beginning of the operation in the Kursk region, Ukrainian paratroopers have inflicted losses on Russia of almost 8,000 soldiers. This is equal to 15 Russian battalions. Chinese military is studying the characteristics of HIMARS weapons used in Ukraine. Among them are drones and which they could potentially encounter in a war for Taiwan. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine is gradually escalating into World War III, which Moscow's allies, China, Iran and the DPRK, could take advantage of. This is happening in particular because of Kiev's weak support from Western countries. This was stated by Foreign Affairs Media Outlet. According to experts, Western support for Ukraine has stalled since the start of the war. Their greatest fear is an escalation of the conflict, which is why they are limiting the use of their weapons in Russia. The situation has led to countries outside Europe turning to Russian President Vladimir Putin with diplomatic schemes to end the war, experts say. However, it will be difficult for them to take a neutral position, making Ukraine unlikely to agree to talk. Foreign Affairs stressed that the war in Europe is gradually turning into World War III due to its gradual increase in scale. This could be exploited by China, Iran and North Korea, for whom participation in the war in Ukraine could help prepare for wars they may wage in the future. Experts shared that there is a rumor that the Chinese military is studying the characteristics of the weapons used in Ukraine. Among them are drones and HIMARS, which they could potentially encounter in a war for Taiwan. Iran also received Western technology captured from Ukraine, including anti-tank and anti-aircraft missiles, which it could study for its own production, experts said. North Korea could gain combat experience for its soldiers. 
Foreign Affairs recalled that Europe has been waging wars beyond its continental borders for a long time. Now, Western countries have decided not to intervene in the conflict directly without sending their soldiers to Ukraine, which is a signal to Russia and its allies. However, non-European involvement in the war would not necessarily lead to Ukraine's defeat, the experts added. Foreign Affairs said support from Iran, China and North Korea could come at a high cost to Russia and suggested that Moscow would have to make some concessions to strengthen its relations with these countries. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban said on Friday during a radio interview in Budapest that if U.S. President-elect Donald Trump had won the U.S. election in 2020 there wouldn't have been a war in Ukraine. People say a lot of things about Trump, including people who don't like him, but there's one thing that no one questions, which is that he does not launch wars, Orban added. He added that, strong leadership from the U.S. would have ended the war in Ukraine. During his campaign, Trump said he could end the war in Ukraine, now well into its third year, in a single day. Ukraine and many of its European backers fear that this means a peace on terms favorable to Russian President Vladimir Putin and involving the surrender of territory. European allies in NATO hope to convince Trump that if he helps to negotiate any peace, it should be done from a position of strength, for both Ukraine and the US. Orban, widely seen as having the warmest relations with Putin among all EU leaders, has routinely blocked, delayed or watered down EU efforts to extend assistance to Kiev and to sanction Moscow over its war. He has consistently pushed for a ceasefire but without detailing what it would mean for Ukraine's statehood or territorial integrity, or the potential security implications for Europe and the United States. A háború két évéről beszélek, és azt is mindenki tudja, hogy ha 2020-ban Donald Trump nyert volna az Egyesült Államokba, akkor ez a két év, ez a, ez a lidérc nyomásos két év meg sem történt volna, nem lett volna háború, mert lett volna olyan erős vezetője Amerikának, aki kellő időben megkötötte volna a szükséges megállapodásokat. Ez elmaradt. A kormányfői folytatják a megbeszéléseket. A tárgyalásoknak külön... A fronton a helyzet nyilvánvaló, tehát katonai vereség van. Az amerikai ki fognak szállni ebből a háborúból. Ezt is nem fogják bátorítani a háborút, nem fogják azt mondani, hogy a háború jó dolog. Donald Trumpról sok mindent szoktak mondani, azok is, akik nem kedvelik. De egy dolgot senki sem kérdőjelez meg. Ez pedig az, hogy ő nem indít háborút. Orbán Viktor miniszterelnököt.